Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, we come to bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's draw our minds in. Amen. We come to bless the Lord. God bless you, prophetess. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, prophetess Giles and prophetess Joyce. God bless you. All those who are Facebook Live, God bless you. Amen. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes. Yes, yes, there is a word from the Lord. The Lord has given me a word for the body. The Lord has given me a word from you. And one thing about God, when God gives a word, it's definitely for the body. God is speaking. God is speaking to his people. He's blessing and he's speaking to his people. Is there a word from the Lord? Absolutely. God's word will not return unto him, Lord, but it will accomplish what he sent it to do. God's word will not return unto him, Lord, but it will accomplish what he sends it to do. God has given me a word, and he began to speak to me, and this word is for you. This word is for me. In the book of Psalms 27, I lost my place here, okay, I was on it. Psalms 27, get your Bible, Psalms 27, I want you to read along with me. Father, we thank you for your word, we thank you for your presence, we thank you for being with us. Psalms 27, the book of Psalms. It's in the Old Testament scripture, 27th chapter, and the 10th verse. It reads as following. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. The Lord began to speak and deal with me about being forsaken. Being forsaken. When my mother and father Forsake me. Forsake means to be put away, thrown away, cast back, cast out, leave, to abandon. And some of us is dealing with these things even in the ministry. We're dealing with these things. I do not own the rights of the music you hear in the background. Amen. I do not own the rights of the music you hear in the background. Amen. But I, 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 I like to have music when I'm worshiping or praying or seeking the face of God. I put worship music on because it helps to unite your spirit. It helps to bring about peace. A word of advice when you're at home, when you're sleeping, I would implore you to put worship music on as your family sleep. Or even you can go on on the internet and 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 go to the Bible, the auto version of the Bible, and hearing. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. God bless you. God bless you. You're beautiful in God's eyesight today. I just see the beauty of God. I see the beauty of God in you. And we love you today. We thank you for joining us. We love you on today. And we thank you for joining us. Amen. 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 Let me look in here and see what it says about forsaken. I want to get... When the Lord gave me this, he started giving it to me last night. And I began to uh, take a mental note of it. I took a mental note of it. And I said, I'm going to share this on today. It's fresh off the press. It's, I don't make up anything. I allow the Lord to share with me. Fresh, uh, yeah. To do, abandon or desert. When your mother and your father abandon you, 
a dessert you, the Lord will take me up. He's talking about you. And some of us are dealing with being deserted, abandoned, thrown away, cast away. And because of these situations or happenings in our lives, even the men and the women of God, we're broken. We're serving, we're worshiping, but we're broken. We're serving, we're worshiping, but we're we're bleeding. We're torn. And we have some fragmented pieces. But today, God wants you, hallelujah, yes, God. He, God wants you to know then the Lord. The Lord has already picked you up. The Lord has already taken you up. Maybe you're not aware of it. You were able to get through that. You were able to get through that abandonment. Some of you, out of all your sisters and brothers, you were always the one that mama picked on. You were always the one that mama, if you made the bed, it wasn't made up good enough. If you clean, it wasn't clean enough. If you played football to so that young man, that man, if you played football, you were the MVP. But it wasn't good enough for daddy. That's a type of abandonment. Forsaken, deserted, put away, pushed away. That what it mean, that's what it means to be forsaken. But it was God that picked you up. God lifted you up. You didn't lose your mind because God took you up. Then the Lord will take you up. God took you up, but, but you wasn't aware of it. You, 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 you were going through the motions and, 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 and you, you, you're still that little child that wants acceptance or want approval or love from mama or daddy. But let me tell you, the Lord wants me to let you know that the Lord has taken you up. Notice he said he didn't just rescue you, but he take you up. God is lifting you out of that situation. He's, he's lifting you out of that brokenness. God bless you. Thank you for journeying. God is lifting you out. God bless you, Minister Stanifer. Amen. We prayed on yesterday and we still praying on today. God bless you. Love you. Thank you for journeying us. Amen. God is taking you up. I know you've been through a lot when you were a child. And some of us are still holding on to that. And you might say, well, what do I do with this woman of God? i tell you what the word of God said. God told me to tell you this. This is for you here. Hear, hear what I'm saying. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 12, chapter, in the first verse. Wherefore, seeing we also are compressed about with so great a cloud of witness. Notice it says compress, depress, compress, we press, she press, he press, but we're pressing. Pressing also is a part of pressure. When, when you are pressed, it creates pressure. So you're going to overflow or over, you're going to burst out. It's going to come open. So we want to release it. Now listen. Let us lay aside. That's what God said. Lay aside. Lay it aside. Lay aside that hurt. Take that brokenness, my God. That brokenness, take it and lay it aside. Literally take it, just like I'm taking these glasses. Take it and lay it aside. When you lay it aside, you can still see it. You're still aware of it, my God. This is a word for somebody. You still see it because it's not far from you. But when you lay it aside, God will take it. Hallelujah. God will send his angel, say, now go and get that brokenness. My baby is broken. My son is broken. My daughter is broken. Go and get that, that bruise and that wound. Go and get that hurt. Go get that disappointment. Lay it aside. Go get that longing for mom's or dad attention. Maybe dad moved down the street and you you would make friends with the 
with the boy or the girl of the family that your father is now living with and now being maybe what we feel a father to them you want to you want daddy's attention so now you going down you don't want to know that boy i want my daddy you don't want to know that girl i want my mama you up and down the street you looking for your mom maybe she's on drugs she's in the trap house you go into the trap house because you want to spend time with mom. God bless you. You want to spend time with your mom. But they forsake you. They deserted you. And let me say this. While we're talking about when my mother and father forsake me. Which is in the book of Psalms 27 and 10. Then the Lord will take me up. Sometimes your mother and father couldn't give you the love and attention. The support. The, the cheering. They couldn't cheerlead for you because nobody cheerleaded for them. They couldn't hold you up and encourage you because nobody encouraged them. Every seed bears fruit out there its own kind, but we're going we're gonna to break that seed today. We're going to stop it today. We're going to cancel that assignment in your bloodline and in your life. It will not. It will not affect your children. It will not affect your tomorrow. We're going to stop it affecting your now. I know it hurt. I know you're, you're crying out, why didn't nobody help me? Why didn't nobody love me? Maybe they didn't know how. And I can say this, you can't, I can't give you what I don't have. If you ask me to give you $1,000, I can't give it to you if I don't have it. I can do the best I can do. Mom and dad, they did the best they could do. Maybe you was that child that was that, that mama had when she was 14 or 13. She was a child. She was just trying to get some attention. And that's what happened to some of us. We got into relationships or situationships because we wanted someone to see us. We wanted someone to validate us. We wanted someone to say, I matter. And because of that, you let you, you, you let him have sex with you. You got pregnant at 15, 13, 16. You didn't know you were pregnant. All you know is that now I'm not feeling good. I'm graining weight. I'm sick. Now you're feeling something moving in your belly. And in, 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 in a sense, you get in denial. You get in denial. Because you don't want to deal with it. And some of our parents did that. Sometimes they forsaked us. And it was because they were too young to deal with us. They were too young. Maybe you were a child of abuse. Sexual abuse. Rape. How do you process that? I don't want to process this. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Facebook Live. We love you. I don't want to process this. I'm, I'm pregnant. They're telling me I'm pregnant, but I didn't do this. And it's hard to explain to people that you didn't do this pregnancy because, in fact, you ended up pregnant because Joe down the street raped you. Uncle raped you. Brother raped you. Daddy raped you. That's a lot to process. But we're going to lay it aside. God bless you, Prophet Scott. God bless you. And man, we're talking about when my mother and father forsake me out of the book of Psalms 27 and 10. Then the Lord would lift us up. God is lifting you up. He's lifting you from your past brokenness. He's lifting you up. Hallelujah. God is taking you up from your disappointment. And I don't know about you, but I've had some things in my life that I had to lay it aside. Take it and lay it aside. Lay aside every sin and weight that does, if you don't lay it aside, it's going to fester in you. It's going to stay in you. It's going to abide in you. You don't lay it aside for the person that raped you. You don't lay it aside because if I lay it aside, mama gets off scot-free. Mm -hmm. Lay it aside. That's bitterness. That's unforgiveness. Lay it aside for you. 
lay aside every sin and weight which the easily it, it will easily beset you it'll get you off course of life you can't be happy in your marriage because you're still broken and hurt over what mama did or how mama treat me God has blessed you with a husband God bless you with a wife but you're so busy being hurt over the little boy that was abandoned but the Lord has lifted you up God has raised you up look at what the Lord has done God has blessed you the Lord has blessed you God has covered you God has blessed you God has covered you lay aside every sin and weight which does so easily beset you God is covering you it's time for you to lay it down prophetess it's time God bless you God bless you Edna God bless you we love you we're talking about when our mother and father forsake us then the Lord will lift us up my God my God, I, I, I can feel it. I, I can feel it. It's on this line. I can feel a lot of brokenness, disappointment on jobs, trying to work jobs. Boss is not treating you right. That's, that's a sign of putting off and casting off and rejecting. Maybe it wasn't mama. Maybe it wasn't daddy. Maybe it was big brother, big sister. Maybe it was auntie, it was grandma, it was uncle, but I'm here to tell you today, the Lord will take you up. Notice he said, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will lift me up. The reason why God takes you up, because he's taking you, he's bringing you up out of that low level. He's bringing you out of that low place. He's causing you to be elevated. God is elevating you. God is raising you up. God is exalting you today. Hear the word of the Lord. Mama, mama was just a child. She didn't know how. Imagine how she felt when she became pregnant at 13 with you. Or maybe you were the second child. I know women that were raped and their parents made them marry the guy that raped them. They didn't know how to say, Mama, he raped me. All they, Mama, who, who got you pregnant? And you tell them. And that, now they go to him and tell him you're going to marry him. He was okay for that because he, wanted, he was a molester anyway. He was a predator anyway. So now you with this man who beats you and have sex with you forcefully. He doesn't do anything for you. He don't give you money. He'll pay the bills and keep the lights and stuff on. He won't let you go anywhere. I know one woman said her husband used to beat her and put her in the closet. He was an abuser. And she would shake her head. And, and I could see the dismay and the hurt on her life. They're not together. The children are grown. But I can still see her holding and experiencing, reliving that hurt and that pain, lay it aside. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go so God can heal you. Let it go so God can deliver you. You got in that relationship because you just wanted some type of contact. I want somebody to see me. I want somebody to love me. I want someone to validate me. And when you got in it, it wasn't healthy. It wasn't loving. He wasn't kind. Man, you got in that relationship because you wanted love of a woman. She wasn't loving. She wasn't caring. She wasn't kind. But you just wanted to feel loved and validated. You wanted to feel important. And a lot of us have been down this road. It leaves us broken and depleted. It leaves us longing and reaching out and seeking, reaching, constantly reaching. Because we're that little girl that wanted mama to pick us up, daddy to pick us up. We still that little girl saying, mama, you know, when a baby 
a baby come up to you, they want you to pick them up, they, they put their arms out. They put their arms out. You're still that little girl. You're still that, you're, you're an adult, but you still got them, that desire in you. Mama, daddy, and because you got it in you, anyone that comes along, you just, some children see you, they just run up to you and hug you. They're crying out, they're saying, love me. And unfortunately, sometimes the wrong person showed you attention. The predator showed you attention. The molester showed you attention. The abuser showed you attention. You didn't know how to process that. You didn't know how to take that. But every time I try to tell mom or dad or grandma, that boy, go sit down, go shut up. And that's nicely putting it. And it broke you. It wasn't your fault. It was nothing you did, but it broke you it wounded you it hurt you and now you're still trying to deal with that and minister you're still trying to deal with that and be whole for your family be there for your son be there for your daughter be there for your husband be there for yourself and it's a lot to take on it is a lot to take on trying to serve while you're broken it's like running a marathon with a broke leg. It's not easy to do. Peppanina, we're praying for you. Peppanina is like trying to run a marathon or a race, but your leg is broken. It's uncomfortable. It's painful. And we, we, that's what we're talking about today, them painful things. You're wounded, you're broken, but you're still trying to run this race. You're wounded, you're broken, you're fragmented, prophetess, you're fragmented. My God, but you're still, I, I still got to go on because I got to raise these kids. I got to take care of these kids. I got to pay the light bill. I got to pay the rent. Working while wounded. Working while injured. You were injured on the job. You were injured in the home. My husband comes home and he beats me, woman of God. Working while injured. I know what I'm talking about. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I'm talking to you, woman. I'm talking to you, man. Women, wives, love your husband, support him. When he come home, he's sitting on that bed, put your arms around him. I love you and I believe in you and I support you. What can I do for you? Have you asked him that? What can I do for you? Have you asked him that? Husband, have you asked your wife, what can I do for you? She may say, you know, just keep asking her. She's going to answer. She might say to you, you know, I always wanted a red bicycle. A red bicycle? You don't need no bicycle. No, no, no. You don't know what that red bicycle will do for her. You don't know what that red... You know, I've had people to tell me I've never had a birthday party. I've never had a party. You know what? Get, get as many people as you can. Throw them a party. You don't know what that will do for them. Edna, you never know. Edna, God sees you. God loves you. God knows what you're going through. God knows you. God knows your circumstance. He knows your situation. God knows you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Apostle Sean. God bless you. We're talking about Psalms 27. When my mother and father forsake me. And some of us are dealing with the, the forsaking. The devastation of you're my mother. You're supposed to protect me. You're my daddy. You're supposed to cover me and protect me. But there was no protection. There was no covering. I've known people who had to go, the big sister had to go in people, other people garbage can. Get seafood and, and, and knock the maggots off of the food so she can take it home to her other siblings so that they can eat because mom had a drug addiction. And, and, and 
now that mom is clean, mom don't like the daughter telling that testimony. But let, let me share this. Your testimony is not your mom's testimony. And your mom's testimony is not your testimony. You may feel like I'm embarrassed when my mom get up and says she started having babies at 13. But what 13-year-old child is having sex? That's not normal. What 11-year-old boy is having sex? That's not normal. When I was 11, I still, I still wanted an Easter bucket. I still, because I wanted that candy and them, that stuff that was in that bucket. That's what I was doing. I still was in play mode. Now, my friends grew up and more, was more advanced than me. They were doing some stuff that they were more advanced than me. Let me put it like that. Not that I wasn't doing it, but I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. Some of us was violated and raped and molested. We didn't even know we were raped and molested. All we know, this person got on us. And they hurt us. Down there in our special parts. This is a word for somebody. You're broken. You're dealing with trauma. It's very traumatic. When a mother and father forsakes their child. That's very traumatic. I remember when I went to school. And then, you know, I just let the Lord lead me when I get on here. We're going to pray. Because this is a prayer ministry. But there, God has given me a word. When my mother and father forsake me. Then the Lord will take me up. God is exalting you. God is lifting you out of this situation. God is freeing you. Whom the Son set free. Is free. God is freeing you right now. You might say, well, this is not our usual. I don't go off the usual. I go off the spirit of God. I go, I am led by the spirit of God. I'm not huh, traditional and I don't, I'm not formal. I'm a woman of God led by the spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. And if you are led, you are the sons of God. You are the sons and daughters of the Most High. Continue to be led of God. But listen. We didn't know what to do with what happened to us. It's traumatic. Some of us are still dealing with traumas in our life. And we're in what you call survival mode. We're, we're in what you call survival mode. We're just going through the motions. It's time for us to end it. It's time for us to lay it aside. It's time for us to deal with that trauma. Maybe mama, maybe mama, daddy, or whoever that person is that violated you. In order for you to get your freedom, write them a letter. Mama live, go talk to mama, go sit down, mama. Why did you treat me like that? Why when I got straight A's, you never told me you was proud of me? Maybe mama is deceased. Mama's deceased. Go to a gravesite. Or maybe just, you know, God says seek counsel. Seek counsel. Maybe write a letter or just take a moment. Sit down. Mama's gone. Go ahead and speak because the spirit still lives. The body dies, but the spirit lives forever. The spirit lives. If this is what you need to do to get yourself free. You was molested by your uncles, your brother. Confront them. If you can. You're not confronting them to attack them. You're confronting them to get free for yourself. I had to do some confronting to some people. Because of things that they did to me in my past. And I got free. And when I confronted them. What happened is. I, I was no longer a victim. I was no longer their victim. 
that I became the victor. And this is what God wants for you. God wants you to walk into your victory. Your victory. Not into your victimizing. Not being vulnerable. Because what happens when you see that person, you feel some kind of way. You can, you can be in a store walking and they walk in a store and you kind of, but you're an adult now. You're not, I'm not that little girl no more. I'm not that little boy that you violated. I'm not that little girl that you bullied. And some of you were the bully. Some of you were the bully. I was a big girl, but I was never a bully. But I ain't have no problem with whatever you start. I misunderstood some things. It started some things. And for that, I apologize. Because I can be wrong. You can be wrong. Perhaps you were the bully. Perhaps you were the person that was doing the victimizing. You were victimizing others. Because you perhaps were victimized. Or you were victimizing others because you were forsaken by your mother and father. But whatever the situation, we're going to lay it aside. Take it in your heart. Lay it aside. Lay it aside means to let it go. <laughs> you can't get free from what you're holding on. Well, I can't forgive them. Yes, you can. Because forgiveness ain't about them, it's about you. Forgive them and let it go. God said, vengeance is mine. God will take care of them. God will take care of them. God said, vengeance is mine. God will take care. I'm not saying don't call the police if somebody violates your child, your grandchild, or you. I'm not saying that not to. But I'm talking about this is a personal thing, an individual thing. Because you feel forsaken. You feel cast aside. You feel deserted. Lay it aside. Lay aside every, and I do mean every, sin and wait. You might say, they hurt me and it's a weight on me. I'm here to tell you, if you don't let it go, if you don't lay it aside, that weight will become a sin. It'll become unforgiveness. It'll become bitter. Listen. Let us lay aside every weight. God bless you. God bless you. And the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Be patient when you lay it down. Be patient when you let it go. Because you got to run the race. Remember I said... Uh, wounded while working. Wounded while working. Injured by, while working. You were spiritually injured while you was on the job. Your job was to be a little boy. Your job was to be a little girl. But you was violated. You were raped. You were abused. You was beat. You were told you were ugly. You would never be nothing. You would never do nothing. You were told You'll never do nothing. You'll never be nothing. you just like your dad. you just like your mama. You won't amount to nothing. Nothing good will come of you that wounded you. We're going to lay that aside today. Because God said, the Bible said, God said, thou art perfectly and wonderfully made. God said, you're the head and not the tail. God said, hallelujah, you are the head and not the tail. You are the apple of God's eye. Yes. You're beautiful in his sight. You are beauty. You are beautiful. You are loved. You are cared for. God loves you. And God has needs of you. So lay it aside. So that you can teach others how to lay it aside. And run your race. But we're not going to run this race. We're not going to run our race. Well, I'll take that back. Because I've been, I, I've been wounded and running. Your leg may be broken, but you better keep running. You better stay in this race. Because if you get out the race, that's when the enemy going to win. 
the enemy is not the, Satan is not the winner. You are the victor. You may have been victimized, but you are the victory. You have the victory. Vera White, Adeline Porter, you have the victory. Kim Hill and Carolyn, you have the victory. Prophetess Giles, Prophetess Joyce, Prophetess Scott, and man, Minister, and man, Minister Jeffrey is in my spirit. Minister Jeffrey, you have the victory. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. You might be saying, I'm having struggles. I have struggles. I have these feelings. And but I'm, I'm, I'm ministering. Sit down. Sit down. Sit this one out. Sometimes when you get injured, when you're in the race, you got to sit out. So that you can work on that injury. Sit out so you can work on that sin in your life. That lust. That transgression. Sit, sit this one out. Sit this one out until you get strong and well enough. Well, I'm the pastor. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Because of sin in your life, pastors molesting children in the church, having sex with women, sit, 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 sit this one out. Every injury does not require you to keep playing. Every injury don't continue to require you to keep serving. Sit down so you can get hold. Sit this one out. The coach is telling you to sit this one out. The Holy Ghost is telling you sit this one out. Because see, when you, if I'm on here ministering to you, praying for you, and I'm sleeping with women that comes to the church. Yeah, women sleeping with women. Not right. That's not right. That's a sin. But she came looking for God. She came looking for guidance and directions. And now I prayed on her. I've taken advantage of her. Now she's confused because she was violated in the world. Now she's coming in the house of God. Looking for safety. Looking to lay aside her sin and weight. And now I just put another weight on her. Now I'm weighting her down. This is a word for somebody. See, it's called accountability. Just like you want mom and dad to take accountability of the hurt and the trauma they did to you and put on you. Take accountability of your trauma. Take accountability of how you forsake and cast off others, how you abuse others. Let's take accountability. Charity starts at home first. Let's get cleaned up. Let's get ourselves right. Let's repent. Let's get restored and turn back to God. Let's sit this one out. Maybe you need to sit this one out. Come on out of the come on out of the what you call the pulpit. Go sit down. Go to your pastor. Go to the sister and say, Elders, I'm going to call you. I need y'all to pray for me. Right now I'm going through something. Maybe you don't have to tell because you can't tell everybody all your stuff because everybody can't take your stuff. Everybody can't deal with your sin. Everybody can't deal with your weight. Everybody can't deal with your brokenness. I, I, I told the pastor and he told everybody that my daddy molested me. Now I'm violated and feel shame all over again. You told the wrong person. I told the evangelist that my first child was conceived by rape. And my mama told me to marry him. And I married him. I had six more kids. I never loved him. He never loved me. He beat me. He violated me. He controlled me. He didn't let me have any freedom. Now that I'm free, home, the sun set free. Come on, it's time for us to get free today. It's basically time for us to get free. Whom the sun set free is free indeed. Whom Jesus set free is free indeed. Lay aside. Lay aside every sin. It's time for us to lay it down. Lay it aside. Look at it. 
But you got to let it go. You got to let it go in order to get free. You want your blood pressure to go down? You want to come out of depression? I remember I got pregnant. My baby daddy left me. I was depressed. I didn't laugh. I was very sorrowful. And I remember going over Miss Pauline's house. Pauline is gone on now. And Pauline had said something. And I started laughing. Because I hadn't laughed in months. Because I was broken and wounded and disappointed. The man that I loved. Thought loved me. No longer wanted me or my baby that was in my belly. That broke me. That hurt me. Miss Pauline said something, because she was funny. She was kind of comet, comedically. She was comic. She was com comedic-like. And I started laughing. And I remember t I told her, I said, Miss Pauline, I said, I hadn't laughed. And, and I don't know when the last time I laughed. And I began to tell her, my baby daddy left me. I began to tell her my story. When you lay it aside and it broke, when she made me laugh, that depression broke. Confession, they say confession is good for the soul. Confess your faults one to another. Confess your pain one to another. Confess. Tell somebody. It broke. When I laughed, I, that, that oppression and depression, that sadness broke, and I began to tell her. And I'm so grateful for that woman to this day because God used her to break. Oh my God, I break, break right now. Break right now. We command that stronghold, that depression, to break that pressure, oppression that yoke, that entanglement, that bondage, that brokenness, it's already broken. So if it's already broken, we don't need to break it. We just need to lay it down. Put it down. Dominique, Keisha, put it down. Little old, Tracy, Miyoshi, Kiana, Drea, Nita, Prophetess Giles, Bumper, Chris, Kiva, Michael, the Giles family, Prophetess Giles, grandkids and great grandkids, put it down right now. You already broken. All you got to do is let it go. Some of us are in different states. Some of us need to be broke. We need to be broke like I was broken. I had to be broken. That depression had to be broken off of me. And when it was broken off, when I began to share with her, that was me laying it down. Come on, lay it down. Open up your hands. Stop holding that pain. Open up your hands. Release it. Let it go right now. Let it, let it, lay it aside. Let it go. But get it away from you. Get it out of your hand. Get it out your heart. Some of you can't move forward because you always thinking about what happened to you. At some point and some time, you gotta get it out your mind. Let it go. Let the mind of Christ free your mind. Get it out of your mind. Until you change your mind. Nothing. You will not grow. You will not prosper. Get it out your mind. Free it from your mind. Get it out your mind. Come on, get it out your mind. We need you to do it today. So that you can be free. Stop wrestling with it. Stop trying to rationalize it. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop asking why it happened. We're not, God bless you, we're not denying that it happened. We are in no wise denying God bless you cousin. God bless you cousin. I see you. Thank you for joining us. We're not denying that these things did not happen to you. Even on the job you've been mistreated, abused, racially target discriminated against but you still worked while you was wounded you still ran your race while you were wounded injured while still working injured while still playing 
they call you a trooper. But because you still, because you continue to run your race and you were wounded, you, you, you played injured. They say the good ones play injured. The good ones play when they're injured. The good ones play when they're sick. I, I, I'll tell you this. There's complications when you don't deal with something correctly. Sit this one out. Sometimes we need to sit this one out. Sit it out. Get yourself together so that while you're running this race, even when, you, when you're running a race, you have to take a break, a water break, Gatorade break, a food break. You have to take a break. Because see, while you're working, you're practicing. You're practicing. While we're here praying and seeking God, we're practicing until we get into the kingdom of heaven. We're practicing. So I'm not telling you to stop working. I'm telling you sometimes when you have issues, if you are a man and you have feelings for children, boys or girls, and you are ministering, you are wrong, sit this one out. Working while injured. You injured. You toxic. And we don't need you taking that toxic and that pollution, that polluted thinking and actions and implementing it on boys and girls, even adults. If you are rapists, have urges to rape and take and violate men and women, and you in this ministry preaching the gospel, Sit this one out. We need you to sit this one out. Until you get yourself together. So that you don't do like your mother and father did. Forsake you or cast you aside. See, when you injure others and violate others, you cast them aside. You treat them as if they're not or nothing. You're crying about what mom and dad did to you, but what are you doing? We're not saying what mom and dad did to us was the best, or maybe it wasn't right, but they did the best that they can do. Every mother and father didn't forsake us. Sometimes it was maybe the school system. When you went to the school system, they picked on you. You was quiet, you shot down, you did everything mama said to you do. But they targeted you. Discrimination. See, the enemy. The enemy knew who you were going to be in Christ. So the enemy came to make war with you. Because you're your mama's seed. The enemy came to make war with the woman's seed. You're the seed of that woman. Because if I can interrupt his life when he's in school, maybe he won't write that book. If I can interrupt his life while he's in school, I can get him locked up in a spit in jail. He won't be with me. I'll interrupt or slow down the process. But I say unto you this day, not so. I don't care what you've done, what you've been through. God is taking you up today. But you got to repent. I got to repent. I got to forgive. I got to let go. I got to repent. I got to forgive. I got to let go. See, we can't be selfish with this thing. We have to repent too. We can't put the finger at mom and dad because they forsake us and they, they let us down. The school system let us down. The church let us down. Because everybody that said, Lord, Lord, ain't going to enter in. Everybody calling on the name of the Lord is not worshiping God. They're denying the power of But we're going to lay all that aside today because we, we're going to get ourselves right. We're going to get ourselves cleansed today. We're going to get ourselves fixed today. We're going to renew the spirit of our mind today. We're going to repent today. We're going to rededicate ourselves to Christ today. So no more working while wounded, injured while working. No more. We're going to deal with our situations. We're going to deal with our injuries. We're going to deal with our faults. And we're going to deal with our sins. We're talking about ourselves today. 
Yes. My family, your family, the Cooper family, the Edna family, the Stanford family, and the Apostle Strange, Strange, uh, Strangefellow family, and the Prophet Scott. Amen. Prophet is Joyce, the Vaughn family, the Cooper, the Watson, the Dixon, the Cohill family. Amen. Pastor Hudson. Pastor Sean. Amen. Minister Mike. Amen. Everyone that is online, through Facebook, everyone that's on the prayer line, we're going to deal with ourselves today while we forgive our trespass and those that trespass against us. Mom, dad, school system, police department, we're going to forgive them today because God said vengeance is mine. God said vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God said, vengeance is mine. God bless you. He said, vengeance is mine. Amen. God said, vengeance is mine. Amen. God said, vengeance is mine. Amen. Before I pray, do we have anyone that desires to pray? Before I go into prayer, is there anyone that desires to pray? Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this word, Father. We hold dearly to our heart. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 and 10. With my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. We thank you for taking us up. We thank you, Lord, for loosening and letting go of the, our brokenness and our woundedness. And we ask and we repent of our forsaken as we repent of those that we've trespassed against we repent of our sins we repent of our trespassing and, and those things God that was wrong in your sight and we ask you to forgive us and we ask those that we have offended and trespassed against those that we've abused and that we've forsaken and cast off that they would repent to us Lord, some of them are dead and gone on. Some of them, we don't know where we're at. But Lord, we repent right now and ask for your forgiveness and ask them to forgive us because of our sins and our trespassing. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the ability and the opportunity to lay aside. We let it go right now. Let it go right now. Every abuse, misuse, let it go right now. Every hurt, every pain, every fragmented, let it go right now in the name of Jesus. Loose me, loose me, loose me, every stronghold loose right now. Loose, loose right now. Loose Etna children and her grandchildren and amen. Jackie, sister Jackie, loose her sons and her daughters, her grandkids. We pray for marriages right now, that they be loose from the plan of the enemy to destroy and to separate every infiltrating spirit in, in the marriage, in the marriage, not only in the marriage, but in the marriage of the Lamb. God bless you. Thank you for journeying. God bless you. Amen. Every infiltrating spirit, lingering spirit, hold on spirit, draw back spirit, loose us from it right now. Lord, we need to be loose and set free. Set us free, Father, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. People still coming in. God bless you. Loose us and set us free. Loose us, Father. Loose us from every evil word and demonic word, every witchcraft word, every crafted word. That was every, yes, every crafted word. People, cra people crafting words against us crafting words against our she our ministry and our life yeah in witchcraft there's crafting they, they, they craft things against us they craft words and spells we cancel that right now in the name of Jesus no weapon that is formed against us 
craft mean to form. No weapon that is crafted or formed against us will be able to prosper. My God. Apostle Strange fellow, Apostle Sean, no weapon that is formed against you will be able to Every lying tongue that exalts and rises itself, every lying tongue that opens up its mouth against you shall be silent and brought to naught in the name of Jesus. Every one of them. In the name of Jesus, we lock the mouth of the lion against the people of God. Lock the mouth of the lion. Some of us are in the lion den, but God has locked the mouth of the lion that the lion will not eat us. We thank you for delivering us out of the lion den. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the Daniel's anointing. We thank you for the prophetic anointing that no lion den will be able to devour us. We come against the lion den right now. We trample on the Snakes and the adders, the young adders, shall we trample under our feet. The Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not want. He make of us to lie down, my God. Because we don't know sometimes how to rest. We go, 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 but he make of us to lie down and bring pasture. Lord, restore our souls today. That's why God wants you to lay, lay aside every sin and waste so he can restore you. Restore us, Lord. Restore our souls today. Restore our souls today. Restore us, God. We've been broken and fragmented and wounded. Restore us. Make us whole, God. He that is whole need not a physician. Make us whole today, God. Rather by going through the physician or through you, but make us whole, God. The Thompson family, make them whole. The Dorham family, make them whole. Make us whole today. Father, we're standing on your promises. And we know that you've never lost a battle. And we thank you that we are win. We will win. We will win. We are the victors, not the victims. We are no longer victims to bullying, racism, sexism, pornography, homosexuality, fornication, adulteries. We are the victor today. We are no longer entrapped or in bondage. Set us free, Father. Set us free. We commit Louisiana, the state of Louisiana to you. We commit the state of Louisiana to you. And who, my God, thank you, Father. We commit it to you, Father. Set Louisiana free. Set Louisiana free. Louisiana is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And everything in Louisiana belongs to you. And we commit Louisiana. We commit every living being to you, Father. We commit ourselves to you. And we commit everything in Louisiana to you, Father. Louisiana is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And everything in Louisiana belongs to you, Father. And we lay it at your feet, Father. We lay it at your feet. Just as we lay aside our sins and wait. Lay it aside today. Loose it and let it go. We thank you that we found favor in your sight today. You have found favor in the sight of God today. This is what you have found favor in the sight of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You have found favor in the sight of the Lord today. We thank you for the refiner's fire. We thank you for the purifying fire. Fill us again, Lord, with Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. We need Holy Ghost and fire. Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Renew our minds today. Renew our spirits, God. We, we renew our vows to you. And we confess with our tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. We confess with our... Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. We confess with our tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord of our life. You're Lord of our mind. Jesus, Lord over us. Lord in us and Lord through us. Father, be with these children as they go to school. We bind up socialism, we bind up discrimination, we bind up bullying, we bind up meddling and picking, and we bind up the spirit of attacking. We bind up suicide. We bind up homicide in the school systems. We bind up suicide and homicide. We bind it up right now. We thank you for blessing our kids in the city, in the school, and in the field. Bless their going and coming. 
bring them home safely and in their right mind. We bind up the spirit of racism in the school system that causes our children to rearrange the furniture of their mind. Not so. They are beautiful and fearfully made. Thou art wonderfully and fearfully made. Come on, speak of your children. Thou art wonderfully and fearfully made. Tell them who they are in God. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. You are beautiful in the eyesight of God. You are holy. You are righteous. You are royal generation. You are royal priesthood. My God, you are precious jewel. You are a precious jewel. You are a precious jewel. You are value and you are worth. You are worth and you deserve it. You deserve the goodness of the Lord. You deserve to eat the fat of the land. You deserve it. We thank you, Lord. We pray over our food system. We pray over our water system. We pray over our governmental system, our police force, our hospital. Lord, that young lady that lost her child. We don't know what went wrong, but Father, we pray for that young lady and that young man. We pray for their family. And we decree and declare that no other child head will be pulled off of them. We bind that spirit. Whatever that was, Father, we bind it. Mistake, we bind it right now. No weapon that is formed against the unborn children will be able to prosper. No child that is created, we pray for the seed. We pray for that young girl that's given her child away. We pray for her that she do so and that they be placed in a good home. My God, some of you, mom tried to abort you, but she couldn't abort you. And because of that, you went through hell, but we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you're here and know that you are purpose. You are created for a purpose. You are purposely created. And your purpose is to serve God and to worship him. My God, I feel that in my spirit. Come on, let's just worship God in the spirit of of holiness. Yes, God, thank you, Father. Hallelujah, let's just worship God. Just, just, let's just, hallelujah, just come on, let's just bless and love on God right now. I just see the fire. I see the consuming fire. I see the fire. We thank you for the fire right now, Father. We thank you for the consuming fire, Holy Ghost and fire. We thank you, Father, for the fire burning up everything, consuming everything that is not like you, purifying fire, purify us, Father. Purify our minds, purify our flesh, Father, of all these unnatural affections, of fornication and adultery, molestation, predators. Flee us and cure us, deliver us, loose us, set us free from these abominable, Abomination. Abomination. Free us from abomination, Father. We repent right now. And we confess with our tongues. Lord, let the murder murder no more. Let the killer kill no more. Let the liar lie no more. Let the sick say that I am healed. Let the liar say that I am truth. That I tell the truth. Let the murder appreciate life. Let the murders those that are murderers and commit homicide, let them begin to love and appreciate life. Yes, Father, bind up the spirit of murder and homicide. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We love you, God. We commit ourselves and submit ourselves to the Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We lift Miss Eartha and her sons and her daughter up for you, to you. And we ask that you would bless her and that you would heal and deliver and restore her. Make it good for her, Lord. You know what everyone has need of. You know what we have need of. We thank you, Father. We love you. And we ask God that you would lord over us and be with us. The McCabe family. The Claiborne family, Felicia and her children, prophetess, the apostles, the prophets, the preachers, the teachers, the lay members, the sinners, the believers, the backsliders, Father. Heal our backslider. Deliver us, loose us, and set us free, Father. 
We need you in our life. We trust you and we love you. And we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Remember, God adds to a church that is daily, according to book Acts 2 and 47. God adds to a church that is daily. Continue to seek the Lord daily. Continue to pray. Continue to worship. Continue to confess and speak life over your children and speak life into you. Speak life over you, in you, over your children, over your community, over your city, and over your state, over your government officials. Speak life. Speak the word. And so shall you live. Man must live by every word. That the man must live by the word of God. Speak the word. So shall you live. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you.